Thank you, Frank. A deadly crash has closed down part of the 401 this morning in the Kingston area. Melanie is following the story in the newsroom. Kev, here's what we know so far. Four people have died, two others seriously injured in a fiery seven-vehicle crash on the 401 just east of Kingston. Happened shortly after 1 o'clock this morning. It involved four tractor trailers, two passenger vehicles. Right now, not clear what caused this crash. OPP Acting Sergeant Angie Atkinson gave us an update. Here's what she had to say. There was four occupants of those cars. It was fully engulfed, and upon um, the fire being extinguished, there was four persons within the vehicle, and at this time, they've all been confirmed as deceased. Uh, there was there was two persons taken to hospital with with serious injuries. At this time, we don't have any concerns of, of anything that the tractor trailers were carrying. There's no no in indication or information of any uh, uh, chemicals or anything like that. The westbound lanes of the 401 are now closed from Joyceville Road to Highway 15, and it's expected to stay that way through the majority of the day. Coming up in just a few minutes' time, we will be getting the latest from Tony Orr. He's a news anchor with K Rock News in Kingston. Well, more reaction this morning to Donald Trump's sudden firing of FBI Director James Comey, including a letter from the dismissed bureau chief himself. In a farewell letter to FBI staffers obtained by CNN, Comey writes, it is done and I will be fine, although I will miss you and the mission deeply. The note follows word that Comey had requested more resources for the investigation into possible ties between the Trump campaign and Russia just days before he was fired. But the White House insists that the probe has nothing to do with Comey's ouster and it's rejecting calls for a special prosecutor. Senator Richard Blumenthal is among the lawmakers slamming the firing, telling CNN it represents a, quote, looming constitutional crisis. It involves a potential confrontation, as did Watergate, between the president and other branches of government. And it may well produce another United States versus Nixon on a subpoena that went to the United States Supreme Court. It may well produce impeachment proceedings, although we're very far from that possibility. Donald Trump has tried to put himself above the law. And that's not how it works in America. The way it works in America is that investigations are independent, no matter how powerful you are. Oh, here we go. Today, acting FBI Director Andrew McCabe will testify before the Senate Intelligence Committee in lieu of Comey, who was scheduled to attend. But we could be hearing from Comey soon. He has been invited to speak next week. And even more information relating to the Russia investigation could come from former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. He has been subpoenaed by the Senate Intel Committee before he refused to hand over documents related to the case. Well, we have more on the developing story at the Toronto Zoo, where more than 400 workers are now on strike after contract talks ended overnight without a deal. Our Tammy Sutherland live at the zoo this morning with the very latest. Tammy, we're hearing from the union that represents striking workers, and what are they saying? Yeah, so right now we just spoke to the uh, president of QP Local 1600, Christine McKenzie, who says that one of the main sticking points and what caused the talks to break down last night is job security. Uh, well, when it came down to it, the main issue for us was, as it always has been, job security, and uh, we couldn't get there with them. Um, we tried to meet them halfway with their proposals, which were, were took a, a, well, they want to eliminate all of our job security language. We, we tried to come halfway and address some of their issues, um, but they, uh, they, they, they were behaving like bullies, frankly, and, and they weren't willing to move off of their, their original line, so we, we couldn't meet them. When you say job security, is it part-time jobs? Like, what's the actual concern with the language? It's it's everyone actually. Um, they they want to they want to take away all the job security that the uh, full time and non permanent members have. So um, in terms of what that would mean, what they're planning to do, I, I I can't speak to that. But it would mean that that every person's job is in danger here. All right, now there are about 20 of the workers here who are on the picket line at the main entrance of the zoo. The zoo is closed for the day. Non-union staff will be inside the uh, facility maintaining the uh, the facility itself as well as taking care of the animals. Mal, I'll send it back to you.